Hi there, Robin here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Alto Total Bluetooth Adapter, the number one selling XLR Bluetooth adapter. So we're not just going to cover the original one. We're going into depth. We currently have the original number one selling XLR Bluetooth adapter from Alto. We then have the new Bluetooth Total, we'll call it a 2.0. We'll talk about the benefits of that. We also have the Bluetooth Ultimate and we're gonna cover all the features on that. We're also gonna cover the most important question besides range, features, and benefits of all three of these. Is it possible to use an original Bluetooth adapter and interchange it with any of the other ones, especially when it comes to using the sync function? So we're gonna be trying the original Total, syncing it with the Total 2.0, we'll call it. And then we'll also try syncing the 2.0 to the Ultimate seeing if all these pieces can connect or be interchanged with each other. So first, let's take a quick look at the original. This is what we're looking at right here. Now, the original basically was round. The biggest downfall on the original was the actual USB adapter was at the bottom of the unit and it required a USB mini, not a micro, a mini which to be honest has gotten very difficult over time to get that particular adapter. If you misplace this one, you're going through your old junk drawer trying to find a replacement for that guy. Now, as features went, it did have a pad button on it, which allowed us to go from zero to minus 10, which was in my eyes very convenient when we went from a mixing board to a speaker. That was a nice feature. It's not located on the new models. Besides that, I was never a super fan of the fact that it was one long piece. That hasn't changed. So it would be nice to always have an extra XLR cable, a short one, a foot, just if you don't want to break this, that's kind of important. But outside of that, the range on the original one was awesome. They advertised it as 100 feet and it did exactly what it said it was going to do. So you can get this all the way down the street and it would still be connected. Very impressive. The original came in a bluish purple package. We'll put that aside. By the way, the reason why there's a Blast King speaker next to me is this is the speaker we are going to be plugging these guys into and testing. This happens to be their new KXD 210, their 10 inch actual speaker, which features 8,000 watts, plus it can be used as a monitor. Very cool, we'll have a video on that soon. It'll probably have a link up here if I've already completed that job. If not, well, it won't be there yet. It'll just be my finger pointing to the corner of the screen. So let's quickly unpack this guy because I'm not a big fan of unpacking things. I've already pre-cut this. Oh, look at the magic. It just comes out of the packaging just like that. That's how an unpacking video should be. I mean, if you really get excited over somebody taking something out of a box, you got issues. So that's what we look at when we look at the new Bluetooth total versus the old Bluetooth total. The original one is slightly shorter uh, than the new one. And when it comes to overall size and depth, the original one wins there as well. But the important part is they moved the USB attachment to the side and it is now a micro. So life has gotten easier when it comes to those cables. Outside of that, the connection points are the same with the XLR. Of course, that's the whole point of this is it's XLR. The switches have changed a little bit. You'll see there's only one switch on the new one and that is to turn the unit on and off. There's a pairing button and a stereo sync option. On the original, remember, we did have a pad button on it. And if that mixer does not have a pad option built into it, you're gonna have to be a little sensitive with the settings of the new ones. So again, the range is awesome. I mean, we're still talking 100 feet of connectivity and we're still talking six hours of continuous play. So we're not gonna worry too much about it. Plus you can also plug this straight into a speaker. If the speaker features a USB as an input plug, you can use that to charge it because it requires a small amount of actual power. 500 milliamps will do the job just fine. So any USB port will actually charge this unit and keep it running as long as you wanna use it. So let's turn the first one on, the original one. So we've right now turned on the actual Bluetooth unit and we're gonna plug that in the back. So now that we're connected, we're connected to the phone and I've got some music. I can hit play and there we go. Easy peasy. So remember at any point, if you wanna skip through, there's options at the bottom. That's what all those new tabs are for. And oh, by the way, there is a thank you button there. Uh, that's a new thing. If you haven't seen that, just click on it. It'll show you what's going on, but that's a thank you button. It's an optional thing. Seeing that this is primarily how I make my revenue these days. 
So let's try pairing this guy, which is the new one, to the one I already have plugged in. Now remember, I have the original Bluetooth Total plugged in. I've been using it for years. I have mine in there. I've decided as a customer, just like you, I want to have a second one. So I'm going to have to press, we'll pull it out because we don't need to leave it plugged in. It's very cool because you can just pull it out. Now the battery is low, so hopefully we get through all of this. Now I press the pair button here. We're going to push that back in there just so we can hear it. You'll notice that it's pinging now. I'm going to press the sync button on here. So I've had to push the button on here for about five seconds, make sure nobody accidentally presses that pair button. Push that in there, see if we're getting any difference between the two. So at this point, they do not appear to be connecting to each other, which would be a real big pain in the butt. So we're gonna keep doing a little work on that and seeing what we can figure out. The ultimate. So remember this pinging sound that's annoyingly happening in the background? That is the actual Bluetooth Total 2. So now we're going to hold down the stereo sync button. And there you go. That's how quick. So if you have an original one, it will not sync with the actual original Bluetooth. But we're going to go one step further and we're going to try the ultimate on this and see if the ultimate will take to the first one. So now we've pulled out. So we're going to press the link button on the original total. And then we're going to press the link button on the ultimate total. We're going to plug that back in. There's that one. There's the original one. And this usually happens real fast. This is like, you know, within five, 10 seconds, this is all done. Nope. All we're getting is the annoying binging sound. So again, we'll take this out show you how fast that is. Now the ultimate is still plugged in the speaker. We're going to turn on the total 2.0, press the sync button and it's done. It's that quick. It's over. We don't have to worry about it. They're synced. So remember, I have them both plugged into the same speaker right now, but normally the concept is to have one plugged into one speaker and to have your second one. So if you're an owner of a total, the original, you want to run out and try and find an original tonal, even if you're buying one used because somebody wants to score one. Better to negotiate and get yourself an original, even if it's a display model, if you already have this. If you don't have the original one, definitely you're going to want to buy one of the new ones that have come out. And so this way, if you decide you want to have a second one down the road, you can do that really easily. So let's talk about the overall features. Again, compared to the old one, it's a little bit bigger, but micro USB doesn't have a pad button, but a lot of people probably didn't know how to use that in the first place. So that's everything that's going on there. Power wise, everything is as good as it's going to get. So longevity, usability features, excellent. Now, why did they come out with a second one? This is the big deal right here. So this guy here, changes the game for how these get used. It's got a male XLR at one end and on the back end, it's got another male XLR. This one does have two switches on it. And that second switch is to go from mono to stereo. So I can go mono, which means the whole signal is going to come out of the front end, which is why they have the arrow here. If I want, I can run another XLR cable from here all the way to another speaker, or I can run a short XLR from here into let's say a mixer. So if I'm running, so here we go, just like that magically a mixing board has appeared. Now it doesn't have to be an alto. It can be any mixing board at all. What happens though, is we want to add Bluetooth to this mixer. We don't have it. We don't want to just add regular Bluetooth. Adding regular Bluetooth would basically be saying, grab a total, put it in here and then you're done. There you go. Your pan stays in the middle. You set your line levels. You're good to go. Now, what if, what if you wanted to have a stereo signal in here? Well, that's not going to work for us. I would have to plug two of these in. And over the years, I have sold customers two of these to run in stereo. You grab the ultimate with the second XLR output. And what this allows you to do is you can now plug this in right on top, just like that. No worries. 
I can grab the XLR cable. This happens to be from Blast King and it's just a nice three foot cable, convenient for doing little projects like this. I can throw this in on top and I can throw this into the next line input. Now, if I did not want to have all of this hanging out here, I would have used another short Blast King XLR cable so I can hide this behind because of course you can't even see me. There's so much coming off of this thing. But that's what happens. There's one thing you still have left to do. On the unit, there's a switch, mono and stereo. You want to have it in stereo so this way it will send one channel out here and one channel directly into the mixing board. And there you go. That's the magical reason why you buy all of this. Now remember, you don't always have to stick this straight in. Like I said, I could have easily plugged this in here using an XLR cable and I could have used a second XLR cable to go right into the mixing board. And then in which case I could have hid this all in behind and still had my Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, you can also use that for plugging it into the speakers. And there you go. That's how you plug the total or the total ultimate from Alto. That's an awful lot of stuff there into a mixing and into a speaker. Again, very easy, very convenient. Buy one, buy two, buy the ultimate. If you want to have one plug in to two separate outputs. And if you have the old one, well, you're tough out of luck because it's not compatible with the new gear. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Try and get back to you as soon as we can or once a week or however that works out these days. So for now, if you're looking for the Altos, we're going to have links down below. Please remember those are our affiliate links. We're also going to have a quick video through our Robbins testing studio. Those videos we use primarily on Amazon. Those are when you scroll down the videos. Always make sure to make our video the last video you watch when you're on Amazon. Outside of that, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now. And remember to do those things people do, which is comment, subscribe, hit the like button. Like button is very important. Hit the like button. Come on, you can do it. It's right there. Just push that like button. Okay, there you go. Thanks. I appreciate that.